had mentioned, we did a preliminary webinar that if anyone is interested in listening to as an adjunct to this, don't hesitate to contact Kim directly because she would be more than happy to send you that, that recording. We tend to keep all of our recordings because, you know, people listen to them over and over and over again, so please don't hesitate. We have a very large crowd with us today, and in doing so, with, it, with the weather being so beautiful, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be waiting until the end of our time together to open up our chat box to you to ask specific questions that you want covered. And so as we're going through the presentation, I don't want you to worry about the actual presentation that Kim's going to be taking us through because she will be sending that to you directly. So if you could just take matching notes and then as the presentation comes to you compare and contrast, that will make this very impactful because we have a lot of territory to cover over the course of our time together, which will be about 60 minutes. I'm going to leave time at the end. Whereas, you know, again, you can, you can go into that chat box and ask questions and you might get the presentation, walk away, and again, we're going to have other vehicles that we're going to share with you for you to ask questions also. So we really want to get as much out of our time together as, as possible. So what you're about to experience is not the frontal part of interviewing. And what I mean by that is most organizations give you, here's a tip, or here's something you want to keep in mind, or give this some thought, or whatever the case may be. And that methodology does not get the desired results, certainly not from our direct hire standpoint. So APA Solutions is the space by where our companies live. So we represent growth-oriented organizations that enlist our help to identify, retain, and develop their human. They could literally be a mom and pop shop right to an international powerhouse. So we cover the gambit but what is consistent is that we only represent growth-oriented companies. And what we did was we capitalized on that direct hire methodology by working with employers and asking them to share with us their thoughts and frustrations when it came to the identification process. And the bulk of our employers interview right in our facility so it allows us an opportunity to give you real-time information so I'm gonna say to you things like yesterday and last week and all of that we literally last week had three employers in our office and many come to do second interviews and final interviews so I am definitely going to be the intermediary that can share with you and dispel the myth between what an employer is thinking and feeling and how as candidates can we relate to that. So career reform is really our, our initiative to get people to look at their future, look at their background in a completely different way than they have in the past. And that's why we use the word reform, because what used to work for your older sister absolutely does not pertain any longer. My world is moving in lightning speed. And if you said to me, hey, Joan, what do you say to the job seeker today that you didn't say, you know, yesterday? I mean, there, it, there is just no commonalities. I mean, it might be as, as trite as me asking a person, you know, did you have any problem finding us or how did you hear about us? There's very pieces of information that I share today that I shared yesterday. And when I say yesterday, I'm talking within this past 12 months. So you can see how quickly the world is changing and I'm in the thick of it. So I can't imagine how disconcerting this is for individuals 
regardless of where they are in their professional journey. You could be a fresh out of school person. You could be a return to the workforce mom. You could be somebody who's looking to enhance their background. You could be somebody who's downsized. I mean, we literally coach from 16 to 61. So we encourage you to always be checking out our career reform website. If you haven't sent us your resume, you're going to want to do that. And the reason being is whether we have a position for you today is, is one thing, but I can definitely tell you that we have a cutting edge database. And the first thing we do whenever we get a new opening is we always look at our database first. We always inform those individuals first. And that's how you stay in tune with career reform and all the great tools that we have promotions, prizes, you know, we do so many cool different things that you're going to want to follow, follow our social media, etc. So this is just a little bit of baseline in terms of who we are as an organization, how we came to be, because we wanted to spend as much time on the employer side as we are on the candidate side. And in so many instances, the focus is all about the employer and rarely about the candidate. And we just don't see a marriage like that making sense because then it's almost like an arranged marriage. And is it really going to be able to work for you from a, from a long-term standpoint? So as we're, as we're moving into our, our next slide, I'd like to share with you that, you know, this information that we're giving you, oh my gosh, you guys, this freaking works. We monitor every single piece of advice that we give. And what I mean by that is to our brick and mortar classroom, we monitor how long it takes them to get a job after graduating from either our core curriculum or our specific um, sessions that we have that we're doing about LinkedIn or we're doing about, you know, finding out who you are as a person, whatever the variety is, we can safely say that people want to know what is the outcome what are the results? And so we're as concerned about that because we understand the emotional toll that looking for a new position brings to a candidate. So we want to come to you with real, live, proven solutions. And that's what we're going to be covering here today. We'd like to share a, a success story with you. This is somebody who literally, as, as we talk about this, this is somebody that fresh out of college, we helped her to secure her first role. We had a career plan for her based on that career plan. Um, she first company for a period of time, but now it was ready for her to go on to a, to a second position. She thought that she could just use all the collateral from a couple of years ago. And guess what? Found out that it wasn't working. So she she went back to the drawing board. We brought her up to, you know, this is where we are today. This is how you have to represent yourself today. And, you know, we're happy to report that she's taken that advice. She's done great. And now she's moving on to that next level of her career. That doesn't just happen, you guys. An employer is not going to help you facilitate your long-term career success. Back in the old days, your boss might have taken care of you, but today it's very, very much about self-empowerment. So what I'm hoping to do with our time together is give you those tools to be self-empowered. In our last webinar, which was awesome, we received a lot of great feedback from it, was about interview, I mean, I'm sorry, um, summer job search techniques. And again, if you, if you weren't part of that, don't hesitate to look that up on our career reform website. Kim would be happy to send you that because if you can be putting these webinars together, you can see how it really matches quite nicely to move you into a um, career planning process. So we appreciate Kim's Kim's update and, and we wish her all the best. And now she's on her five-year job and it's all systematically coming together. So it works out great. So what I want to talk to you about is I want to talk to you about getting career ready. All right. And it's the exact same thing as getting interview ready. 
because if you're not career ready, you cannot be interview ready. They are not mutually exclusive. You have to make sure that you have this level of preparedness because you're going to see throughout the course of, of your interview structure, you're going to be hearing my, my, my words that, I, that I'm sharing with you today because so much of these things that, that, I've, that, I've, that I've highlighted for you are what employers on a very conscious basis are looking for somebody to have in their toolbox. It's part of making sure that you know what this next job looks like for you and what is the intellectual property, what is the tools that you're going to be able to get from taking this next position. Gone are the days where we're just saying, hey, you know what, Joan, let's get real. It's about a job. I need a job. I need money. This is, this is my reality. If you are putting a series of jobs together, that does not make a career plan. You can't put a bunch of floors together in a house and think it's a house. It has to all flow together. So we need to start with this three-pound muscle we fondly call the brain, the command center, and start to think differently because going to a more empowered person when it comes to the building of you incorporated will better prepare you not only for this next position, but I'm telling you, this is what the wealthiest people, that top 10% have in common. They're not smarter. They don't have better emotional intelligence. It's not that they come from, you know, all this money. That So much of that is just, you know, really miss. What we're talking about here is that they have a plan strategy. And if you would, you would take the time to really get to know yourself and give yourself credit for what it is you do know. I, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, oh, you know, Joan, yeah, I guess I do that okay. And, you know, oh, well, let me tell you about my six million weaknesses and here's my one strength. The fact of the matter is, is you have got to identify what your strengths and weaknesses are in relation to a particular position in relation to a particular role that you're trying to assume. So if you are just coming in out of college and you know what, you haven't had a lot of practical work experience, that is a deficiency that you currently have or a weakness if you will. So you need to turn that weakness around. So how do you get that first position that allows you to get the type of experience that will allow you to gravitate towards that next level of your career evolution, right? A weakness, contrary to what everybody believes, is not a skill. You know, I say, you know, tell me about something that you're, that's tough for you or a deficiency. You know, they want to say things like, well, excel. You know, I wish I was stronger here. When an employer is looking for what makes you unique or what you need to work on, they are not looking at it from a task standpoint. And we're going to get more into that, but that is an immediate sign that a candidate is out of touch with reality when they don't understand what really makes them unique, what really makes them empowered, and what are the areas that they need to work on, all right? So that piece in itself, we literally can spend 60 minutes talking about, but, you know, make note of it because everything is going to play into how important that piece of, of, of the puzzle is. So, if, if mapping out a long-term career plan seems overwhelming, just make that baby step to say, this is what my next job should look like, all right? That's what Kim, even though we had coached her two years ago, was not doing. She knew that she had wanted another job, but she didn't really understand why she wanted another job. What was the job going to bring her? What different skills were, were, were she going to be able to attain from that experience? I mean, all of those things she really wasn't giving consideration to until we made her sit down, take a deep breath, analyze where she was, and then say, okay, this is what my next job should have. 
Now, what was amazing about that exercise is going through that, her interviews totally changed because she was out in such a way that she hadn't acted before. And she didn't realize how acting the old way was not serving her best interest and about how acting the new way was serving her best interest. And she ended up getting an amazing job just based on the fact that she had very clearly defined what this next job was. You know, she's young, so she couldn't say, well, this is what I want to do by the time I'm 50. That, that was very overwhelming for her, but she knew what she needed to do in order to get to that next level of experience. So it just played into understanding her audience and what was the type of company that was going to help her attain that. So she got a lot more focused about where she was sending her resume, how she was representing her background, everything played into that. And, you know, again, the rest just goes with it, you know, looking professional, coming prepared, understanding that you are representing you out there, all right? So many times I see candidates disengage, like they're not really representing themselves, they're like it's just this obscure product that they, that they go out there with and they're like, whatever will be, will be. An employer does not look at it that way. They are going with the assumption that you are representing who you are as an individual in the best way possible. So it's very important that we are dotting our I's and crossing our T as we're, we're you know, getting our fundamentals in place to go on an interview. And I want to I want to talk about this whole body language piece of it because this is very very important. I was sharing with somebody yesterday that I was interviewing that 3 weeks ago I had 31 people in one week, 31 people that were eliminated for a position based on confidence. Every single one of those 31 people had the background, they had the tenure, they had the, the, the soft skills, they had everything in place, but they could not represent themselves confidently. Because when the brain hears the word interview, the brain is not like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. That sounds like a great party. I have to go to that. The brain hears interview and they're like, oh, I've got to go sit there meet a person, feel uncomfortable, have them ask me all these questions, all the way around, we immediately start to configure a negative in our mind, and we don't realize how powerful that, that thought is when we bring that to the interview. So I wanna share with you the type of things that employers speak with me about all the time. And regardless of how you feel, this should be a really exciting time for you to be identifying a new position. This whole, it's the economy, there's not a lot of jobs out there, all of those things, unemployment is ticking down, all right? There's a lot of positive things that are happening in the economy, and not a week goes by that an employer doesn't say to me, I can't find good people, all right? So if I have great people who can't find good companies, and if I have good companies who can't find great people, you can see the disconnect, all right? That's what Kim was really referring to in the beginning of our conversation. So keep in mind that how you're representing yourself in person is going to speak to an employer. It's going to say something about you. And if you act vulnerable, they are immediately going to feel different about your candidacy because the way that an employer looks at the interview process is everything that you say, I'm interpreting in a way that relates back to me and what my needs are for this person, all right? So if, if I have a problem and I have this opening and I need this person to do that, if you say something 
that I deem as a negative, that's going to be more of a problem for me versus a solution, I immediately start to move the interview in that type of direction. So the more that you can get out and, and, and start to interact with people, the stronger you will be in this area and the more you can understand that employers are just looking for real people, there will not be a gold statue at the end of this performance, the more comfortable you can get in speaking about yourself. You don't have to be me, but you have to be the best version of you. So this is what we hear most of the time from employers. So I really wanted to share this with you so you can, you can understand how important it is for an employer and, and you know, um, their, their impressions of it. Next slide, Kim. When this gets to your narrative and your story, tell me about yourself. What brought you here today? There are many, 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 many different ways that a, that a company will ask you about your narrative, all right? So this will freak out candidates that are like, well, they didn't ask me about myself. Well, what did they say to you? They, they, oh, they asked me what brought me here. No matter how they phrase it, pretty much the way that an interview is going to go is. An employer is normally going to share with you a history of their organization, a little bit about themselves, and then they're going to, you know, give you more information usually about what's led them to the role being open. So they'll do like an introduction, then they'll fill it with a, a lot more substance, and then they'll kind of close off their narrative and then turn it over to you, all right? But sometimes an employer just comes in and they're like, you know, hey, Marsha, it's great to meet you. What brought you here today, all right? So regardless of how it goes, this piece of it, is unequivocally the most difficult piece. And if you want to rule the kingdom, you have got to get this piece down, all right? And what I always do is I always break it into levels because it makes it easier for a candidate to kind of interpret it that way. This is not about reading your resume. I can't tell you how many people do that. It's, it's insanity. They can read and they've read your resume, all right? What they're looking for at this point is now for you to take that resume and bring it to life, but in a big picture way. So they don't wanna know from 1962 to 1964, from 1964 to 1966. They're, they're not looking for that, all right? So let me give you a very, very specific example, all right? So you get a sense. Let's call this piece the introduction, all right? So in my particular case, what I would do is I would start by saying, hi, my name is Joan Gracie. Obviously, they know your name, so you don't have to repeat that, but for my purposes. My name is Joan Gracie, and I'm a career reformist. I get you to look at your future in a different way than you have in the past. So you can see that that introduction immediately starts to identify who you are as a brand. And most people don't take advantage of that because they go right in to what they've done. So if you're you know, a sales professional, I'm a sales professional that's been both in high tech and low tech product lines, all right? Again, an introduction of your skill level. I'm an administrative assistant who has worked side by side with both leadership and rank and file people. So it's that overview of what it is that you've done. When you get more into the substance piece, the meat and potatoes, again, it's more big picture. So what you wanna share at that point is, the type of work that you've done and how it all meshes together to bring you to today. Because in the beginning, we talked about your planning and we talked about having a plan is so important for you. Well, it's really important for an employer. 
And the reason why it is, is the way that they feel about it is if you don't have a plan for you, that makes me nervous. Are you going to be a flight risk? Are you going to take this position for the short term? Do you know what you're looking for? Are you going to come in here and find out that you hate it? It just, it just makes them ponder a bunch of different things that are just not great things, and we don't want them to go to that place. So that highlight of your work experience very specifically would be, all right, I've, I've owned an employment agency now for, for close to 30 years. I've represented growth companies in both high-tech and low-tech sectors. And what I've done is I've taken all the knowledge that employers have been very open-minded to share with me over the course of my tenure, and I'm utilizing that knowledge to help candidates better understand the importance of a long-term and sustainable career plan. So you see what I did there? I brought it all together. I didn't talk in depth about all the different segments, because let's face it, 30 years is a long time. I showed it more from, from, again, a big picture depiction so that, you know, an employer would understand, okay, this is what I've done, and that brings me to present day. So, again, as you're looking at your past jobs, you want to bring those together so that you can give that piece of information to an employer, all right? So, again, for the sales, you know, I've worked and successfully graduated from a management trainee program. I worked within the confines of a technology company, primarily as an inside salesperson, consistently exceeded my sales goals. I was in a leadership track with them. But what I wanted to do was I really wanted to move more into outside business to business sales as a way to enhance my toolbox and knowledge level. And Again, you see how that person is talking more big picture, but you see what else is coming out there, guys? You see that it's what's coming out during that narrative is your strategy, your plan. Something just didn't happen to you. Even if you're just a fresh out of school, you know, well, I purposely interned at a multitude of different companies so I could figure out what it was that I was looking for. These this is, is, is so important, and as you get to the close, the end of your narrative, that's where the connection with the employer has to begin, because you now want to connect your story to their issue, which is their opening. Candidates never do this in a narrative, never ever, so there's never that connection between the employer and the candidate. So I brought myself here for a specific reason. They want to know that this job, that this company, fulfills a goal that you have for your professional journey. So when I saw the outside sales position within your organization, and I did more research, I didn't realize that you were an international company that was experiencing growth nationally. And what your, your values are, what your mission is for your company, seems strongly in line with what I'm hoping to accomplish at this point in my career. So I wanted to better understand from you, you know, what the day-to-day the -day responsibilities of this role is, understand how you see this role today and in the future, and, and see how we, how we can collaborate and work together. That ending of that pitch, all comes together. So this, what I always do is, and if we can go to this next slide, Kim, because this, this ties this very, very nicely. What we're talking about here is your story has got to be related to the employer. So you never change your story to be civil, where you've got all these different personalities, but you do bring out the most pertinent points of your story as it relates to that particular company. And, and people say to me all the time, Joan, I have no idea, I have no idea. You do. If you just take the job description and you just dissect it and you look at all the duties and responsibilities and you take your resume and start connecting it to that job description, 
then take it a step further. Pull out an example of that experience within that job description. And this, this does not mean that you should be trying to be somebody else because that makes an employer crazy. But you want to, again, give them the impression that they have a need, you have a toolbox. And you can take your toolbox and relate it to their need. But very, very few people, again, make that connection. I had a human resource manager in here yesterday. She is a job seeker. She has interviewed people for a solid 20 years. You would be shocked to know that sitting on the other side of the desk, she has bombed every single interview. Okay? And not completely. And she's awesome because she is just she is so open-minded through coaching and she takes everything I say to heart but the point of the matter is there's either been one thing that has knocked her off track or there's been a multitude of things that have knocked her off track but at the end of the day it's because she's not staying in her organic space she's trying to anticipate and customize in a way that makes it unnatural I'm, I'm not saying to do that I'm saying when you're applying to jobs, I'm going out on a limb that you've got 60 to 70% of that job covered because the bulk of the time they're writing jobs for Jesus, all right, sitting at the right hand of the Father. But if you've got the majority of that covered, as part of your, your prerequisite, as part of your preparedness, write down the qualities and characteristics that you have that's related to that position before you go on an interview. People say to me, well, I reviewed the website. Yeah, great. Great, you reviewed the website. What did you learn from it? Because very, very few people who even go to the website know what they're looking for. They're like, oh no, I reviewed the website. For what? For what purpose? What was your takeaway from that experience? And again, most people are not reviewing companies' website for a reason that even relates to interview preparedness. All right? You should be looking at a company website you should be looking at the job description and looking at your background and intersecting them. Bring to the forefront the intersecting points. Is this a growth company? Yes. Okay, well, I've worked in a growth company. Is this a startup? Yes. Well, I haven't been in a startup, but the company that I did work for was experiencing a lot of changes. Pick out those parallels the more you have that ready the better prepared you are going to be all right so your narrative is that overview all right and and you tailor your story to what you think their potential hot buttons are how it relates to their problem getting that connection going with the employer all right because the interview is going to allow you to really get down into more of those details, but that's not where your narrative lives. That's not where your story lives. That's more of that big picture, just like an employer is going to be speaking to you more in that big picture way, all right? So be, be thinking about that because I'm telling you all day long, this is where candidates win and lose within the first few minutes this is where they win and lose because that narrative is just not connecting with what an employer is thinking and feeling okay so what I want you to remember all right is is we're going and looking at this this is the Bane next slide Kim you moved us too quick Who, what, how, why, and Kim, we have to add a where. So we have to make sure that we add that. Where have you done it? If you can keep in mind that an interview is about who, what, how, why, and where, all right, and it's an amazing opportunity for you also to make sure that you're making a good move, Again, when we hear the word interview, we believe that this is a subservient place that we live in. Anybody 
you know, the we're not worthy. There's just so much negative negativity when it comes to this. We've got to get out of that mindset, give ourselves the credibility that's necessary, and understand that a great interview is going to encompass the who, what, how, why, where. All right? So who am I? I've got to know who I am, and I've got to be able to relate that to an employer. All right? I need to know what I am. All right? And when I say that, people will say to me, and this is, this is getting to be such a trend, it's crazy. People are like, oh, I can do that, Joan. I, I can do that. Oh, I, I can do that, too. You know what? I can do that. All right? They want specialists today. Employers want specialists. So if you have done customer service and you have done inside sales and you have done you know, office cleaning, whatever the case may be, you still have to give yourself a title that an employer understands what it is. We have individuals who come to us who have very unique titles to their industry. So it will be, you know, a director of fun or, 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 or whatever the case may be. You have to make sure that whatever your title is, when you're explaining it to an employer on your resume and in person, it's an industry standard because people will get overlooked if they have a title that a traditional employer doesn't understand what it is, especially if there's like a junior recruiter looking at it, somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience and they have an opening for an operations manager and a person has a different title. So the more that you can customize your title to the need and the more that an employer can see what exactly you are, and if you have to have separate resumes for this, which we do in many occasions, that's fine. But don't, don't think that being a generalist, like I can do everything, does not mean that you shouldn't be called something. You know, a generalist can be an office manager, it can be a sales manager, it can be a general manager, but it's a title. You don't see title, I'm in anything, all right? Yet that's how most people represent themselves. They do not tailor it to the specific needs of that company, to that person, to that job. All right, and the how is how you can connect to an employer by by listening. In the interview, we're so worried about you know, oh my God, what am I going to say to this, and what what am I going to say to that? If we can only adjust our mind to think, you know what, I have a meeting, I have a business meeting, I have a meeting. An employer is going to be sharing with me his problems, what he needs. I know what it is I'm looking for, and we're going to have good dialogue about how I potentially can help him and I'm going to better understand how he can potentially add or she can potentially add to my toolbox. So getting into the how is understanding that you are there to serve a specific purpose, fill a need, solve a problem. All right. And this why, why should an employer choose you? I, I got to be honest, I am blown away how nobody can answer that question. I mean, all the time people say to me, oh my God, I, I hate when they ask me that. All goes back to your preparedness. If you don't have the confidence in yourself, in what this next job looks like for you, how it adds to your toolbox, how it allows you to enhance as a professional, how it helps an employer answers these organizations, you will never be able to answer those questions. All right. So I want to break those down because I know that this is a very, very obscure thought because you've never looked behind the curtain. You've never really got to see Oz and what is he controlling back there. And we have a lot of preconceived notions on what an employer is thinking and feeling and again based on that misinterpretation we're answering questions and doing things that are not connecting with an employer so let's let's talk about the employer for just a, a couple minutes here so I can give you a, a, a better sense of, of what goes on there so an employer, as you know, 
is asking you questions as it relates to them, their organization, and the problem that they have at hand. So I have this opening, which in turn means I have work that needs to be done, which in turn means I need to have a person who can, who can help solve this problem. You know, people are freaking out about these behavioral-based interviews because they don't understand that in the old days, an employer would say, well, can you do this? Absolutely. What about this, Mickey? I can do that too. Well, clearly there is a lot of people who said, yes, they could do it, and they really couldn't do it. So the employers move to these behavioral-based interviews because they want you to show them the money. Prove to me. Prove to me that you can do this, all right? And having the specific examples ready to go, understanding the who, what, where, how, when, is going to totally prepare you. Because again, employers are looking at it, the whole world, everything you say in relation to them. So I had three employers last week, as I mentioned. I had a gentleman who came in, great guy. So it's 4.30, and he is making small talk with the employer, and the employer says, oh my gosh, you know, how are you today? And he said, huh, well, I'm just happy to be out of work in here with you. And he laughs. And the employer shot me a look, and I'm like, oh my God, what was he thinking, all right? Now, clearly what he was trying to say was he hates his old job, and that's why I'm having this interview with you. But what he doesn't understand is how the employer interpreted that to mean he hates work. So the whole interview for this poor kid was all about him counteracting the I hate work scenario. And it couldn't be further from the truth. He was nervous. He just wanted to make small talk. But you have to understand how what you communicate potentially can be interpretive. If you give an employer an opportunity to wonder it will never go your way. They will always go to a negative place. They will always go to darkness. And that's why the more that you can keep this in a positive learning type of perspective, the more effective the branding of you will be. So you own a business. It's just a reality. Every employer says this. You own your background. So they closely scrutinize how you run the most valuable thing you own, all right? So when you look at the HR, the operations, the sales and marketing, the technology, the finance, all of these segments of your business model is going to be covered in an interview, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some samples of that, all right? And again, I know after you're going to have questions about this, but at least you better understand the thought process of why they do this, all right? So as we go to the human resource piece of it on our next slide, this human resource piece is the who. Who are you, all right? So this is the questions that they're going to be asking you that gives an employer an understanding of if you know who you are. And you hear that and you're like, of course I know who I am. That's ridiculous. The majority of candidates truly have fallen into positions, taken jobs to take jobs. A family member said to do this. You have a good personality, go sell. There are a minority of people in the workforce that have devised a career plan and, and have aligned it with who they really are as people. That's just the facts, Jack. All you've got to do is research any data on it, and the, the multitude of people are miserable in their occupational choices, which clearly states that they have no idea who they are as people and what potentially they can be good at and how it can really build a happy and long-term sustainable career. If you don't know who you are, this is going to make employers very uncomfortable because they worry that you're not going to stay. All those things that I highlighted in the beginning, all right? They want a person who knows their strengths, who knows their weaknesses, who knows what gets them up in the morning, all right? They want to make sure that you have identified this job as a good role for who you are. It's a match. 
it's the eHarmony piece of this, all right? And I want to show you some samples of what these questions really look like so you have a sense of that. So this is where now they're going to start to drill down in terms of, you know, what are you made of? You know, what is, what is your work experience, all right? Have you, have you been in a fast-paced environment? Have you been, have you been, you know, have you solved problems? You know, what was the company culture like? All of those different types of things, all right? So they're really looking at you from this how well do you know yourself? Because most candidates are conditioned to make up weaknesses or to turn a weakness into a positive because that's what they were taught and they're still being taught today. And that, again, is terrible advice because employers truly do want to know what areas you're deficient on for training purposes, all of those things. And if you don't know, you know, well, I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. All that says to an employer is you don't know yourself. All right. So they just generalize it. They make a big picture. You don't know yourself. So if you're an entry level person and, and they're like, you know, what is it that you need to work on? You know, I, I need to get long term work stability. I have not been in a position where I've I've had a professional role for a few years. I, I don't sit before you and have that. But what I do have is I have I'm a quick learner. Here's an example. So so you counteract that objection, but you counteract it in a real in genuine way. If you screwed up, which plenty of people have in the owning of their own business, you can say, you know, I, I made a mistake. I, I took a job quickly. I should have interviewed the company stronger. I didn't understand that they were having fiscal deficiencies. And in doing so, it taught me a valuable lesson. I have to make sure that I'm interviewing companies like I'm being interviewed. So they're looking for that connectivity of how all of these attributes, these human resource attributes, align with their organization. So if this is a super fast-paced business and you've never been in a fast-paced business, then that obviously would be you know, a deficiency you have. You have to ask yourself, do I want to be in a fast-paced business? And obviously, if the answer to that is yes, then you have to be prepared to counteract those objections. Kim, can we just show them some of the samples of what HR looks like? So all of these questions about the who that you're not really connecting, that's what these really are. And, and, and they are questions that help an employer identify if you really understand the depth and breadth of what it is that you're made of. All right. So you can see the correspondence to what human resource is and the type of questions that would be asked within that. So as we go on to operations, the how, how have you done it? How have you ran your business? You know, if they're saying, oh, why did you choose St. John Fisher? Well, because the bills practice there in the summer, all right? Again, they want to better understand how are you thinking? What's your motivation? How well do you think? How well do you make decisions? See, that's why they're looking for that connectivity because it's all checking out the how piece of it. So, look at the sample questions that go along with this. You can see, you know, why did you leave your last job? We had a huge problem with this question last week. The gentleman was starting on Monday, the Friday before the employer called and said, I spoke to the, the um, local HR representative. She told me how he left his last job. I think that's horrible. I'm just telling you right now, I'm calling him on Saturday. If I don't feel better about the reason and how he left that last job, I'm revoking the offer. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's easy to say screw you to somebody, but what people don't understand is you're not screwing somebody else in the running of you incorporated. 
all right? An employer looks at every single move you make and wants to know that you've thought long and hard about this. So getting into the how and looking at these questions are very, very important. Sales and marketing, you guys, that does not mean artificial. That means sales and marketing that you can speak confidently about your brand. Again, it doesn't have to be my confidence, but it has to be your best confidence. So when we say sales and marketing, it's about how you're representing yourself. The more that you know where you're going, what you want in a position, how it's going to help you, how it's going to advance you. That first part of the webinar, the more time you spend in this, the more comfortable you're going to be in the sales and marketing piece. All right? Because you have all the self doubt taken away, you have all your internal question marks checked and answered. All right? So, this is your ability to be able to speak about yourself. Employers do not understand that people are uncomfortable. You know, oh, Joan, I don't want to brag. You know, uh, you know, I was taught, you know, you just, you know, little girls should be seen, not her. That doesn't pertain to this. All right. That was a whole different era, a whole different er world. If you are not confident in representing the most valuable thing you own yourself, that is a huge red flag to an employer. So please, please, please be understanding what have I done? This is where now you dissecting that job description and really looking at all the different components of the company and things. This is now where you take your background and align it. This is what I've done. This is what I've done that's related to you. This is what I've done that made me successful here. This is what I've done that I wish I didn't do. All right, all of those things. Be writing all of those things down because when you have all this collateral with you, you are totally ready for anything that gets thrown at you in an interview. Let's look at, at the next slide for samples, Kim. So you can see that this is now comparing and contrasting. This is you doing a self-observation, all right? This is you having an opportunity to show an employer, I get what you're looking for. I understand. I'm connecting to you. I get the problem. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my background and I'm going to relate it. So the more that when an employer says, well, you know, we really need somebody who can, you know, deal with difficult customers, you know, Mary, I, I understand. I know that's a major part of this job. And what I can say to you was I, I was a trainer in that area. I was actually identified by my boss to, to teach people that were new to the company about how to deal with. You see how that just very naturally and organically will flow, but what we're doing is we're looking at the job description as a task that was completed by somebody within the company, and we're not looking at the job description like a living and breathing thing, and how we can help to accomplish the, the, the duties and responsibilities that are outlined on that, and what isn't outlined on it. Like I said, when you look at the web and you see best places to work and all those different things that you're looking at, but you're not quite connecting to what they mean, they mean something. All right. And it doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't, but it's having that ability to, again, be the best representation of yourself. And the finances, you know, this is where I am. You know, this is where I am. You know, now with college and everybody graduating, people say to me, well, Joan, this is where I need to be. You know, I have student loans. I'm, yeah, that's great. All right. But unfortunately, employers don't build their openings that way. All right. Where you are is where you are going to need to be within the confines of an employer. If, you know, if you are more experienced, you know, do the vetting. 
do the research. You know, find out where your your background lies, and and you know, is it is it different than where you are? A lot of people who have been promoted from within are making less money than people that are hired from the outside. So, you know, again, it, that's just normal. But as you go to the outside, you know, we had a situation where we got somebody a twenty-five thousand dollar increase in pay. I mean, just based on the fact that it was an international company, they had grade levels. She was the lowest part of the grade level, and if they had grade levels, you guys, I mean, the dollars are already set. It doesn't really almost matter what you say because they're gonna, they're going. Well, it does matter what you say from a psychological standpoint. That was uh, an inappropriate thing for me to say, but. You know, again, from from where from where you are, you want to just make sure that you understand that, and and it isn't going to be an employer's opportunity to figure that out for you. I have people who take cuts and pays for a quality of life. You know what? I'm at forty five thousand right now. I understand that this pays to thirty five thousand, but I'm a grandma now, and I don't want all the duties and responsibilities. You have to be able to explain to them in a way that makes sense all right so that they can you know they can go ahead and bring this all together remember what I said in the beginning when you give an individual an opportunity to make a decision it's it's going to be you know it's 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 going to be that way so you know just keep that in mind it, you know as as you're going through that I have to be ready to go into an interview and answer the who, the what, the where, the how, the when. And if you just write those down and you kind of even reflect on a past interview that you didn't do that well at, you're going to start to see where exactly you fell down. And, you know, again, as you walk away and, and you know, one of the, the best mechanisms for us is for you to post questions on our Facebook page in Career Reform because we love to answer them and, and you know, everybody benefits from that. We always hear back from people in relation to that. You know, don't hesitate to, once Kim sends you the presentation, to really come back after and post a question and say, but if you just think about They've got a problem. How can I solve their problem? What have I done? What do I have in my toolbox? And relate it. Because you can't really answer these questions effectively or appropriately if you don't get why they're asking them. So hopefully what we've covered today is really more of that behind the curtain, giving you a sense of, you know, what is an employer thinking and feeling? This is a major time for them. It's a major piece of, of their duty and responsibility. We just had somebody leave a job very, very quickly, and it put a lot of pressure on our human resource person that we, we love and adore. Um, it was an individual just quit, no notice, no nothing. You know, it's a terrible reflection on her. It was a terrible reflection on us. At the end of the day, none of us can control it, but it just goes to show you how personally we all have to take in, in regards to the whole identification process. We're all part of it. It's all a collaboration, and I think that's the thing is you have to be looking at this job like a partnership. You have to be looking at this like a collaboration, and, and if you're going into this like vulnerable and uncomfortable and ill-prepared and oh my god I've been dropped in this foreign land I can assure you that that is what the outcome will be and I would not until you go through this I would not lose out on an opportunity I would quickly try to put the the collateral in place and study this write your narrative down I can't tell you how many times I write it down Practice it, practice it. We have recordings on our iPad, all these different things. Play it back. How does it sound to you? Do you sound confident? The more you'll do it, you'll see how it just all comes together. We've had people that literally have been offered three and four jobs from no jobs at all, just based on using the techniques that, that we've shared with you here today. So I know that we covered a lot of territory, you guys, and I know it's it's one of those things that, you know, we've got some great promotions as you being part and parcel of this that Kim has put up on the screen for us, some upcoming um, opportunities. Uh, there's just a lot of great things that we have happening. So 
let's kind of move into the, the question. Anybody who does have a question, we, we have a couple minutes. Um, we're, we're just at the 60 minutes, but I, but I feel bad. There, there's so much information that I wanted to get across. But if anybody would like to go into their, into their, their chat box and, and, you know, pose a question, please, you know, don't hesitate. Um, all right, so the first question that we, that we have is, what about if, if you do have a hiccup in your background? Um, okay, so it's kind of, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically, if you have made a mistake in your background, if there has been, you know, a job that you have taken or a position that you did not do well with or whatever the case may be, what people traditionally do is they'll tell half of a story and, and in doing so, they freak out the employer. So if you have made a mistake, what you want to make sure you always do is you want to start positive because the brain actually is very open-minded when you start positive. Then get into the meat and potatoes in a professional way. Again, keeping in mind that you want to make sure that an employer is, is you know, understanding it in more of a collaborative way. And then your ending is what you learn from it. So, you know, I took a position at ABC Company. Um, I looked at the duties and responsibilities, and and I thought that that was that was part of what I would really enjoy doing. What I learned from that experience is that I, I really just want to focus on the customer service piece of it. I'm not a salesperson, and part of my job was inside sales. So, you know, I'm determined to really find a position that allows me to focus on, on where my strengths are, which is providing excellent customer service and satisfaction. So that's why I wanted to chat with you today because it seemed like. So again, you know, employers understand that you've made mistakes. God knows they've made a ton. So they, they totally get it. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, kind of where it is. Well, that's our only question right now, you guys. So we're, we've made it within the hour. We had a lot of people on this webinar today. So I'm only going to go with the assumption that this was really overwhelming. <laughs> we're going to kind of need to walk away and think about this and ask questions later. Or I was comprehensive enough and I've got everybody's command center really thinking about it. And again, know that we are here as a lifeline, whether it's a placement with one of our direct hire clients, whether it's the tools that we've garnered from being, you know, a recruiting and human capital firm, we are here to support you in, in any way. We very, very much, if there's a webinar that you'd like to see, put it up on Facebook, you know, follow us on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn, all of those things, because I am, I'm telling you, we have faithful followers, and it is it has worked in them securing um, a new role, and more importantly, having a, a solid career plan to make them more on the offensive versus the defensive. So thank you for spending your lunchtime with us today, and we'll look forward to you on, on future webinars. And uh, Kim, did I leave anything off? Uh, nope, I don't think so. But make sure you guys are liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, and connecting with us on LinkedIn because we are sharing tons of great content and free tips and articles to help fuel your job search and make sure that you are taking a look at our events page. Uh, we're going to be updating it with all the August events, but here's a sneak preview for you for all the great stuff we're offering. And again, if you are unsure about what it is you need to bolster your career, just give us a call and we'd be happy to take a look at your resume and let you know what we think it is you need to bring you to that next level. All right, that sounds great. Have a great day and we'll look forward to connecting with you soon.